As the race inside Kadima intensifies, the party has made some surprising concessions, and different factions have chosen the candidate they support. Here to provide analysis is Yoni Kempinski. Shalom, Yoni. Shalom, Aaron. So the race is continuing, Yoni, but it seems there's already talk of defections? Well, this is what's going on in uh, Kadima, the party that's basically built up of uh, people who defected from other uh, parties. Uh, what's happening there is the following. The possible uh, beginning of uh, what many of the Kadima critics have been saying from the beginning, the potential breakdown of the party. Uh, following Prime Minister Olmert's announcement of a planned resignation, the Kadima Party Central Committee made a demand that anyone running in the primaries vow that no matter the turnout, the would-be party chiefs stay with Kadima. Among Kadima leaders, we have uh, Knesset uh, Speaker Dalia Itzik. She was uh, pushing this position particularly hard, uh, but Foreign Minister T.P. Livni, who has a tiny lead over the race's number two transportation minister, Shol Mufaz, was resistant to the idea, eventually declaring she would not agree to stay in the party if she was defeated. Now, not surprisingly, the party's central committee gave in to Livni, who uh, it has to be uh, remembered has a large following in the party. Now, Aaron, unlike almost every other party in Israel, Kadima doesn't really have any uh, particular ideology. Rather, Kadima was built by then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon from the not quites of other parties, uh, the people who had a following but couldn't manage to lead. Uh, they joined Kadima. Uh, for this reason, the potential for defections and splits is very high. So the Central Committee didn't really have uh, much choice. If they don't want Kadima to fall apart, Livni has to be appeased. And there is uh, still a serious danger that after the elections, the losers might storm out. If that takes place, Israel's ruling party today might become a third party after the elections. Now, isn't Livni afraid that her position might draw even more strength from her to Shaul Mofaz? For Livni, that might be a serious danger as uh, the wind seems to be blowing in Mofaz's direction, with Livni's once uh, formidable lead reduced to almost nothing. But the foreign minister's campaign has been trying to argue that M.K. Livni's refusal to swear loyalty to the party is actually an expression of Livni's loyalty to the ideals of Kadima. Will this succeed in uh, not further alienating voters and even returning them to supporting Livni? Only time will tell. Hey, Oni, what kind of support have the Kadima frontrunners been receiving? Okay, so Foreign Minister uh, Tsipi Livni has been uh, getting a lot of support from the Kadima party apparatus and official leadership. Uh, just this morning, Yoel Hassan came out in support of her candidacy, uh, but Mufaz seems to be drawing his strength from uh, the more populist pol politics. Uh, 30 mayors are planning to attend the opening of Mufaz's campaign this evening. Nothing similar was in evidence when Livni announced her candidacy. Uh, so we're talking about the, the old men of the party, so to speak. They have strongly come out in support of Livni, while Mufaz is relying on his security record as chief of staff and defense minister, whereas Livni has nothing similar in her favor and will have to try to present herself as being strong while sitting as foreign minister. Yoni, I understand there's also some interest in the race from American Jews. Yes, Aaron, according to the Ynet uh, News uh, site, uh, American Jews are worried that if Mufaz will uh, win and maybe even uh, be prime minister, there will be one problem, his uh, uh, English. He doesn't have exactly the same English that Netanyahu has, and uh, he's uh, also Livni has a better English, and that's one thing that they're worried about, Mufaz's English. Yoni Kempinski, thank you very much.